Good afternoon everyone, this is Michael Romali here with the Hurricane Season 2020 update, part of the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for August 18th, 2020, recorded around 3.16 p.m. Eastern Time. This is going to be a much shorter video. There is some technical difficulties going on right now with my other main computer. So right now I am working on my second computer and this one is a little bit outdated and a little bit slower. Uh, so this is going to be a shorter video, but we'll touch on everything here uh, going on in the tropics. First and foremost, we have hurricane this hurricane over here in the Eastern Pacific Basin, Genevieve, I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm not quite sure. Either way, very well pronounced category four hurricane, well on its way to strengthening even further. You notice uh, fairly decent convective bands rotating around this uh, area right here. This is the central dense overcast, basically this whole entire area. That's what you call a central dense overcast. A eye starting to clear out here, very well pronounced here on the, the visible satellite imagery. This is from tropicaltidbits.com, by the way. Now, for the Mexican coastline, there is some impacts. Heavy rain, certainly one of those uh, today. There is some heavy rain in these far outer bands that are rotating on shore, and this is kind of hanging out here, which means this is going to be a flash flooding threat uh, when we get these training bands that rotate on shore. And because this is moving, you know, this isn't moving at about, you know, 25, 30 miles an hour, it's allowing these training bands to rotate in one after another. That's going to lead to some flash flooding concerns. Although the rain may not be particularly heavy, it still may produce some flash flooding concerns as time goes on. And uh, elsewhere, though, we have tropical storm warnings that are in effect for portions of the Baja of California. Tropical storm watches extend just a little bit north of the uh, tropical storm warning area. And a reason for that is, while because the, the core is expected to stay well offshore here, uh, there is going to be some remnant effects with these tropical storm force winds that are going to get very close to the islands, if not impact the islands directly. And again, you can see right now, this is pretty far off the Mexican coastline, but as this gets a little bit closer towards the Baja, this is going to allow for some of that tropical storm force winds to potentially pass uh, with these islands. So again, if for you folks living down there, you know, some gusty winds, heavy rain, uh, of course, you know, we're not expecting a major hurricane to make landfall, but some gusty winds, heavy rain, flash flooding, that sort of deal is going to be expected uh, because of the closer approach um, that we have uh, this storm taking on. So again, for you folks down there, just be aware of this. Of course, some swells is going to radiate outwards, especially into Mexico, the Baja, uh, California Peninsula, up and through here. Uh, but otherwise than that, again, mostly the impacts, heavy rain, flash flooding, gusty winds, uh, but certainly not going to experience a Category 3 or 4 making landfall there. So no significant issues, although gusty winds and heavy rain can be a big problem there. So that will be one thing to watch. In the Atlantic Basin, we have two systems that have a high potential of development over the next five days, and things are going to get quite complicated with these two systems. And we're not taking a look at the model data today. Uh, again, we'll make a later video, probably later today or very early tomorrow morning, detailing everything. Uh, but with limitations today in computing power, we don't have the power to necessarily do all these, you know, different models and everything else. We got to make a quicker video update. So. But regardless of that, this is Invest Area 97L with a 70% chance over the next five days. And this will be gradually moving off towards uh, the north here, or I'm sorry, west-northwest over the next few days. And again, now for the Lesser Antilles, your threat is basically over from this. Maybe some heavy rain still lingering uh, in the Lesser Antilles, but you know, 97L is now pretty much well past there. And that is going to be moving off in the general direction of Central America, near Belize, the Cayman Islands, and Jamaica over the next few days. This is Jamaica right down here. That's Cuba, Belize. That's right about here. So again, this will be something we got to watch. And again, the models are playing flip-flop. And today's models don't show any development with 98 or with 97, rather, or both of them, rather. And it's hard to see why because we're moving into a fairly substantially favorable environment. The models are backing off. I, I don't know. I don't have an answer for it, and it's uh, perplexing to a lot of people, even experienced 
meteorologists are perplexed about this, and rightfully so. Uh, but the bottom line is that there should be something that goes on to develop in the Western uh, Caribbean here and into the Gulf, probably. Again, this is a land concern right now for portions near Jamaica, Belize. Not expecting a major hurricane by any means, but this has the potential to bring some heavier rainfall, you know, flash flooding, gusty winds, etc. Excuse me, that whole nine yards is going to be there. Uh, so there is an inherent risk, although right now the system isn't developing. Later down the line, we are going to have to watch this for potential land uh, threats over the next few days or so as this tries to move off towards the west-northwest. So for you folks there, just be aware of that. And for Invest 98L, this has a 90% chance over the next five days of becoming a tropical cyclone. For folks here in the Lesser Antilles, Puerto Rico, St. Croix, you folks, especially in the Northern Antilles, need to be watching this. But even if you're all the way down to near Barbados, you need to be monitoring the progress. Trinidad and Tobago, not so much, but just keep an eye out for this as, you know, obviously things will change uh, from time to time. So just kind of be monitoring the progress of that uh, over the next few days. And a, a visible satellite shot, this is from Invest 98L. A couple of things to note. First of all, this is still embedded within a larger monsoon gyre, or not monsoon gyre, monsoon trough and again we're seeing maybe some areas of consolidation in through this region and again i, I just don't know why the models aren't picking up on development it, it just is very complexing very complex situation i don't know why they're not picking up on development i just have no clue and it just doesn't seem to fit the narrative that hey you know we got something to watch and the national hurricane center is not really buying this either so, you know, we're kind of on a, on a very, we're stuck in a rock and a hard place, really. But again, you can really see that we do have an overall nice envelope of energy trying to bundle in the atmosphere. Although, again, this is probably not a closed low-level center. This is more than likely a sharp wave axis with a nice kink in through here. That's kind of trying to focus some of the energy. Now, over time, that might be able to consolidate into an actual closed low-level center uh, but right now, it seems like this is mainly stuck within a larger monsoon uh, trough, and we have the wave axis kind of extending like that. We also have another blob of energy off towards its east, and that's one thing that this system is competing with this over here as well. So these two systems are kind of competing. This will eventually race off towards the west here, eventually catching up and kind of tumbling over 98L. That might be when we might have a con more concentrated area of vorticity and spin, that might be able to tighten things up a little bit more. So we're really going to have to wait, wait and see. But the good news is that this right now is roughly about five days away, five to six days away from any land threats, uh, if any. So good news is that we have a lot of time to monitor this. Uh, but for 97L, the bad news is that we are going to have to watch this very carefully. Same with 98L. This has a little bit higher of a land threat potential over the next five days than this. Uh, just because it's already in the Eastern Caribbean. This is still over the tropical Atlantic, uh, but this will be moving off towards the West Northwest and this could get dangerously close to land as well. So for you folks in the Lesser Antilles, you need to be monitoring the progress of 98. A real quick look at 97L. Again, it's not doing too healthy, but that's kind of to be expected right now. Uh, generally speaking, we have a wave envelope and a general trough uh, axis right there this wave axis is kind of moving off as a whole towards the west northwest and again that's going to be the general theme over the next few days these arc clouds right there this is basically a large scale outflow boundary and you can see that in the visible the visible satellite kind of stretching all the way up through here this is indicative of a very dry stable air out here and this is going to be the theme for the next couple of days. As this moves off towards the west-northwest, it's going to encounter a more favorable environment. It's going to start to slow down. We also have somewhat of a, a, a wave axis kind of uh, near Venezuela right now. That is eventually going to merge with 97. And that's when we might get an overall, overall background uh, increase in background vorticity and spin. That might help to induce... Uh, some additional spin and a, f a fo focusing rather of the convection across that area. So we're really going to have to watch that over the next few days. 
Real quick look here at the 850 millibar vorticity. This is the spin in the atmosphere about 5,000 feet off the ground. I'll point a couple of things out first. This is the hurricane over here in the eastern Pacific, nice and round. These uh, reds and whites, that's your higher cyclonic spin at the 5,000 foot level. And you can see here with 97L, it, it does definitely have a much sharper envelope of energy today uh, than it did yesterday. Something out here in the Gulf of Mexico, not really worried about that, but we'll be watching. Uh, this is kind of in connection to a larger front in through here and just kind of this uh, general troughiness across the southeast. But this right here is the signature with 97L. This will be moving off towards the west-northwest here over the next few days. And again, that's going to get dangerously close in here to, in the western Caribbean, close to Belize, uh, Jamaica certainly, Central America. So for you folks there, just keep a, an eye on this as it heads your way because this will bring some background energy with it. And it's not like this is just going to completely fade out and dissipate. This will bring some impacts, whether, you know, whether or not it's minute impacts or whether it's a bona fide tropical storm, uh, you know, approaching, you know, approaching this area obviously remains to be seen, but, you know, just keep an eye on it. And of course, you know, we'll keep tabs on this here going forward. This is just a mess here with the background energy with 98, which is like right here. This next blob right here, another blob of energy here, more strung out vorticity. This is why it's going to take a little bit of extra time for 98L to actually develop. The further along or the, the, the longer it takes to develop, the further west it gets. That is why I'm saying for the lesser Antilles, just keep an eye on this because if it takes longer to develop, it's going to go further west. And, you know, then at that point, it is situated in a more favorable environment out here. So I'm just trying to say that we got to watch these things because the longer it takes, the further west it's going to get and the more land potential it has, the more land threat potential it has. So we'll see what happens. Again, a lot of jockeying around in the models. Um, I kind of want to throw this out there that, you know, if... You know, you see one model that's beyond five days that has a major hurricane landfall somewhere. Take that with a grain of salt and just understand that it's not a credible threat. Once you start looking uh, in the five-day time window, uh, you know, three, four days, that's typically when things become more credible. Even five days is pushing it, but five days is where the current hurricane center forecast is limited to Yes, there's experimental, um, you know, model or experimental stuff in house by the Hurricane Center that's going beyond five days, but regardless, five days is the max. That's all we're going to show, and that's all we really care to because it just gets too complicated after that. All right, especially in these situations when the models just aren't doing well anyway with the background state. I have no idea what's going on with them. I, I really don't. So. Again, I know this is a little bit shorter and less in-depth. I'm apologizing for that because obviously most of our stuff is in-depth and all of that stuff. But hopefully we will have another video update later this evening. Uh, if not, then of course, or very early tomorrow morning, probably around 8 o'clock uh, in the morning uh, Eastern time, I'll have a full long video discussion out uh, at that point in time. So again, sorry for not having a longer video discussion, but it is what it is. So with that being said, hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. I hope to be back on soon. Uh, and I just realized my time's wrong. That's weird. Anyway, hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. I am Michael Romali. I'll talk to you guys again either later today or either tomorrow morning.